Okay, the NAS sharing before the lunch break is hosted by Asenka, who is the chief technology evangelist at WSO2. Hi, Asenka. Hello. You can unmute your mic, the microphone. Sorry for that small glitch. Uh, I was on yeah. the presenter mode. Hi, Eric. Okay, here you are. Hi, Hi, everyone. Your, how, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah. Asenka will present your topic related to build integrated supply chain for APIs to us. Yeah. It's your turn now. Asenka. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Uh, hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from uh, different uh, locations that you are joining. Uh, so as Eric mentioned, I'm Asan Kabe Singh, uh, Chief Technology Evangelist. I uh, was the former deputy CTO at WSO2. Uh, so I have contributed to this space uh, like API uh, management for a long time and been part of the um, uh, API days program for a while too. So uh, again, as Eric mentioned, uh, today I'm going to discuss about how you can build an integrated supply chain for APIs, and we will discuss in detail during next uh, 20 to uh, 25 minutes. So before jumping to the APIs, I would like to uh, uh, go to the fundamentals of products. Uh, so if you look at uh, a definition for product, you might find different definitions, uh, but um, I think the best definition that I found is uh, API, sorry, the product is something uh, or a service that is uh, market or sold as a commodity. So that's the best definition that I found to explain a product that we will be using in day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life. So if you look at the evolution of products, I took this uh, uh, typewriters, uh, how uh, these things got evolved. Now, if you look at uh, in 18th uh, century that there were different type of uh, uh, typewriter, it started and then it got evolved and you got uh, uh, like computer based uh, typewriting mechanisms like started with WordPress. Now we are in the world that we are using um, uh, Microsoft Word, Google Docs, even Microsoft got this uh, Office 360 kind of a completely cloud-based uh, um, uh, type setting system. So uh, if you look at it in a different way, I took uh, this uh, how these communication uh, products got uh, enhance and if you look at uh, it got started with very basic stuff got little complicated and then moved to that uh, computer-based systems and now we are in an era of mobility so what i need to highlight here the simple single embedded products got uh, complicated during the time and if you look at the uh, mobile-based devices that we have, it is a combination of many parts compared to the first era of these products. So when it happened, like uh, when the products required many uh, components, that's where the supply chain come into the picture. It's basically uh, how suppliers produce and distribute these products among a commodity or a set of users who will be beneficial for that. So that is one part of the story. And at the producing site, like the, the organization required to communicate with many uh, of their partners and then get the raw materials, assemble it, and then create this great experience for their end users. That's where the supply chain coming in the day-to-day -day life. So now we are in a more digital era like if you look at even the product evolution you saw the products are moving to more uh, digitalization and then uh, with that the supply chain has changed so traditionally an industry supply chain contains these five stages like you are in the sourcing stage then you get into the manufacturing and once you manage manufacture you have to distribute it and then sales will come into the picture then only the consumption happen. But in the digital uh, uh, coming into the picture, it has changed drastically. 
Now you discover about these ideas and then you develop a digital product and uh, you get into, uh, sorry, you design a, a digital product and you get into the deployment stage and uh, the customers will come and subscribe or register uh, for these products and they will get an experience. And once they get an experience, they will provide feedback and you will go through this cycle again and again. That is how the digital supply chain looks like. So I took two quotes uh, to, uh, 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 to kind of uh, get in detail into this concept. So one uh, um, famous quote that done by Mark Anderson, who was the co-founder of Netscape, he told sometime back software is eating the world. So why he told that? Because if you look at any company in any domain, their competitive advantage or the differentiator that you, they create from their competition coming from software as well as for their consumers, uh, the expectation coming from the consumers, how they provide a seamless uh, experience for their end users using these different type of digital channels coming from software as well. So with that, I took another uh, quote uh, that is done by the Amazon, sorry Microsoft CEO. So he said, every company is a software company. So regardless of their domain, it can be a, a company that is doing a delivery or it can be a company who's into agriculture. Um, it can be an energy company. So regardless of their domain, every company is a software company now because they have to build uh, these uh, experiences because you can't buy that particular experience. Um, uh, you have to build it. Otherwise, it will not become a unique offering that you provide for your end users. So that is where the uh, software is really important in uh, current market outlook. So if you look at the new product experience, now you don't have to go and uh, go to a car dealer to buy a vehicle. Not every uh, uh, type of uh, manufacturer provides it, but I took the example of a Tesla. To buy a Tesla, you will log into their website and then you will configure your uh, vehicle based on the configuration that you require. You will take your credit card and then uh, pay the uh, initial payment and then it will uh, go for financing after that. And once you are done it, they will start doing the manufacturing of your vehicle based on the configuration that you have done. And an agent from uh, Tesla will come to your home and deliver the vehicle to you. So after you uh, buy the vehicle, the any enhancements will happen through software and then you will do those enhancements as well as you will get keep, uh, you will get updates on a daily or a monthly basis that will improve the experience that you are getting from your vehicle. So it's a, it's as I explained earlier, the competitive advantage coming through the software this company is building. And then on the other hand, we used to use a lot of applications and the way we consume and find these applications is going to uh, App Store and download the application to your device and use it. So this is the new product experience that we are uh, experiencing in modern economy. So if you look at the architecture, uh, that used to build these applications, we can identify two sets of architecture that are still organizations are using this layered architecture, layered and centralized architecture, as you see in the left-hand side. And uh, the most of the organizations are moving to decentralized um, architecture with microservices coming into the picture and uh, cloud native concepts coming into the uh, picture as well. So, but that's a common thing that even in uh, either these architecture patterns, uh, the centralized layered architecture also using APIs to connect different layers. If you notice in this slide, I have identified three types of APIs, edge APIs, domain APIs, and utility APIs. Uh, so these three kind of APIs are exposed in different layers and you build these end use applications on top of that. So people who's using the decentralized and more, um, uh, microservices friendly architecture, still they are exposing these capabilities by using microservices and APIs and uh, building these applications on 
top of that. So the common thing between two architecture styles is API is the way or the API is the glue that connect different type of business capabilities and allow application developers to build various applications that you can run in your mobile or you can use it using a web browser or it, is, it will run in the devices that you are using like edge devices uh, that we call the IoT. So if you would like to read more about these two architecture styles, you can go to this URL that I have put and there are a bunch of emerging architecture patterns that I have put in uh, that particular repository that you can read. Uh, all these architecture uh, specifications are released under Creative Commons 4.0. So feel free to comment, contribute, as well as criticize. So if you look at the evolution of the APIs, because the APIs are not new. I think around 2012, 2011, we started talking about the business of APIs, but uh, the technical APIs were there for a long time. Even during the monolithical application uh, stage, we were, uh, we were using APIs. And then uh, when it moved to early integration, like EDI, file sharing type of uh, uh, communication, we used uh, technical APIs and when the uh, service oriented architecture and different type of message oriented middleware came into the picture, uh, we use uh, semi-technical APIs and slowly it moved to more business friendly API. So today we are in the stage with different type of great technologies connected and providing APIs as a product. So we looked at how software is important to an organization and we looked at the expectation the end users uh, are looking from each and every organization. And we looked at the architecture inside these organizations that used to build these applications. Uh, because of that, I claim APIs are the products of the 21st century because all these capabilities that you are providing for your end users uh, build on top of the APIs that you expose from your uh, business capabilities. So there are different type of uh, models like uh, direct monetization of the APIs, indirect monetization of the uh, APIs, and then how you combine physical and digital using APIs and how you can use uh, APIs as the backbone for your digital transformation. So I pick some examples from the uh, different type of API programs that I am working on uh, to explain this in detail. So you can find uh, these type of different use cases when it comes to the API economy. So we talk about the products, uh, but product can't exist by itself. It needs an ecosystem because otherwise the power of that product will not uh, exist. So when it comes to ecosystem, the best example is a marketplace. So I took this uh, marketplace example from the famous uh, Temple Street night market. I have not been there, but I'm sure most of you uh, know very well. So in the marketplace, there's a nice uh, concept that it is not a one-way uh, transactions happening. It's a two-way transactions. People come and sell and uh, people come and uh, buy uh, this stuff. And there's a lot of conversations happening inside the marketplace. So that is the beauty of the marketplace. And it creates an ecosystem with providers and consumers. So same concept apply in the API world as well. So entire this um, concept of API as a product and uh, API supply chain built by using different type of marketplaces that you will see federated marketplaces, partner marketplaces, closed group marketplaces, shared revenue marketplaces, and aggregator marketplaces as well. So it's a, like if you take a financial industry example, uh, that if you look at uh, for a financial institute to build products, they have to connect with this ecosystem of APIs provided by different type of partners, third party providers, payment gateways, mobile wallets. So once you connect all these uh, uh, different type of APIs, then only you can build a, uh, something productive for your end users. Otherwise, it will be not a great experience that they will uh, 
Uh, okay. And I took another example to uh, uh, explain uh, the uh, marketplace concepts. In this scenario, one organization connecting to different type of cell providers who's coming from the telco industry, and they aggregate these APIs and providing a new uh, marketplace for other providers to come and consume and build the applications as well. So this is how the API, uh, this is how the physical uh, supply chain looks like that we uh, discussed earlier. And if you map the physical supply chain into uh, integrated uh, API supply chain, this is the combination that uh, things inside the API management like a product uh, management inside and monetization, integration and uh, DevOps related stuff can map into the different stages that we saw in a typical physical API management. So this is how the API uh, uh, lifecycle or the complete API supply chain looks like. It's a circle that goes uh, back and forth uh, by getting the feedback, it keeps on improving. And to build that, you need a complete API uh, lifecycle management uh, platform. Uh, so that's where all these capabilities will be really uh, useful. So when you are picking an API management platform, uh, make sure that all these capabilities are provided in the API uh, product, like API integration, API insights, API DevOps, and API product management. So this is more about how you enable new business models, not to kind of convert physical or existing supply chains into uh, the modern digital supply chains. So to do that, uh, we use this concept called quantum duality of APIs that you connect technology of APIs with business of APIs and then create an uh, ecosystem by using federation and business models and how you move into the cloud and then polygot uh, programming models to create these APIs as well as how you can modernize the development. And this is how the cloud native map there. I will not spend much time since we don't have um, uh, time left. So, and then I go, I'm going to highlight again the uh, how you enable the API federation is basically using these multi-part business models. To do that, you can have this federation of gateways, federation of marketplace, and have this ecosystem built inside the organization using APIs and create this API supply chain. So the contribution to this concept, I wrote a detailed article and I have put that link over here. If you are, if you need more information, you can read that. And um, we are, as a company, we are providing a complete API management platform that you can build this concept as well as we are taking API in the, into the cloud by providing an integrated uh, enterprise uh, integration platform as a service called Corio. So you can go there and then register to that as well. And if you are willing to get more information, these are my um, uh, details that you can, how you can connect with me. Uh, so feel free to uh, connect and I'm happy to have a productive discussion with you. Uh, the Twitter and LinkedIn are two really good channels that you can connect with me to get uh, detailed information. Hi, I think uh, thanks for your present representation. One question. We all know that uh, the APIs will be uh, a product, I can say a product in the future for each company. That if one company wants to share its services or products to other customers, do you have any suggestion to them uh, what they should do and what they should consider it before they doing such a product? Yeah, I think uh, a bunch of things that you have to uh, consider there. First thing is the capabilities that you are providing because the capabilities has to be satisfied uh, for your partner. And then number two, uh, like you should manage those APIs. Now your partner is depending on your API, so you have to version it and then you should provide high availability uh, and that life cycle of the API required to maintain that you create APIs, version them, and then once uh, you are ready to create a new API, uh, put it as a new version and retire the previous API slowly. And then the third and most important thing is security because now you are exposing your business capabilities as an API. So you need to secure it and monitor who is using what they are doing properly because uh, end of the day, you are sharing information about your customers to that 
third party who's building the application. So those are, I would say, the three main things that you should think when you are uh, working on API program, uh, but uh, there can be many other supportive things uh, that involves. Mm, is there any challenge for portalizing the APIs that you faced recently? And yeah. any, sh any sharing to our attendee? Yeah, so I think the key challenge is uh, a lot of organizations are taking this as a technical or technology oriented uh, program. Uh, that's where you have to have the balance of business and technology. You have to get the business stakeholders into this program and then look at how you can provide more and more value to the business by using APIs and have an approach like that. And then again, you have to evangelize about your program internally as well as externally as well, because no point of having an API if it is not consumed. And I have seen organization who has hundreds of APIs, but nobody's consuming. So you need to do that evangelizing and then educate people this exists and this is how you use it and have a program to kind of uh, reward people who's using internally as well as uh, tell uh, about your API story to your um, uh, partner ecosystem as well. So that's where I think a marketplace will be really useful that you can uh, used to educate about the APIs as well as it is a, a place that your consumers can come and uh, discover about the APIs that you're providing as well. Okay. Thanks for your sharing today and I hope that all of us can start our journey to portalizing our API for all the things, all the companies. Thank you, Asenka. Thanks.